That's Coach PJ. Uh, thanks for the email. Those are really, really good questions. So I'm glad you liked the video. Um, he, that's a colleague of mine who's a really, really good coach. Uh, and I mirror probably 90% of what um, he does philosophically, I completely agree with. Um, and his approach to diet breaks and maintenance, I fully agree with as well. Now, so we ticked your cow. I, I do this exactly the way that he does it in terms of it's almost kind of a reverse diet. Okay, we've agreed that you've lost plenty of weight. You, you need a little break. We'll up your calories for both physiological and psychological needs for a while. And again, this is this is meant to be looked at as momentum. Okay, we're not done with fat loss. I mean, we are for a little bit, but it's it's a it's a strategic move to where if you want to go back into fat loss, you're going to have a lot of momentum. All right, not to mention the fact that you're going to be able to take these added calories into the gym and put them to good use. All right. And we do this slowly. Okay. I added, you know, hundred, 200 calories as we stand right now, even after I bumped your calories up, um, as you'll see here, even I, even after I bumped your calories up, we're still sitting at around 10 and a half calories per pound of body weight. All right, you have to understand, Brenda, that's still right now considered fat loss calories. All right, even though we increase them, you're still eating deficit calories. Now, we will continue to bump those. It might not be after you get back from New Orleans, but we'll continue to bump those up slowly and kind of find out where your true leveling off point is. So, number one, you have to understand, as he said in that video, you're going to see your scale weight go up a little bit, all right? It, it, it's, it will level off, okay, it might be a couple pounds, it's not, you know, it's not fat, it's, it's stored carbohydrate in your muscle and your liver, it's water, okay, you're not laying down body fat. Now, that's not to say, obviously, if you go to New Orleans next week and pile it all in, when you come back, yeah, your scale's going to be up, okay? I mean, that's a choice. I, I encourage you to enjoy yourself in New Orleans. Don't go out of your way to make it you only live once eating, but don't worry about tracking or worry about if you're over your calories. That's not what vacation is for. You have to understand when you come back, when you go back to your plan for right now at about 1780, it's going to level off. Yeah. If you have a, like last weekend, you, you went, you, you, you overindulge, you know, you indulge. I don't think you overindulge, you just indulged. Yes, the scale weight's going to be up. That's predictable and expected. However, you get back on the plan for a couple days and it's easy come, easy go, and you level back out. This, this is the fitness lifestyle, all right? It's what you do the majority of the time. But to your question, do we want you compensating for, you know, more overeating than what you, you would normally do? No, I don't think that's necessary. Number one, it's can it's a very fine line of becoming disordered. I think you get right back on your plan when you get back. Like I said, you're still pretty much in a what we consider deficit calorie range, all right, even with an increase in calories. And frankly, even if we increase your calories again, all right, because this is a one-off thing, Brenda. You're not going to be in New Orleans for the next month. You're going to be there for a week, then you're going to get back to your normal life. Even if we increase calories again, we'll probably still be, sorry, I disappeared. We'll probably still be in deficit calories. Fat loss calories are typically about 10 to 12 calories per pound of body weight. So we will still be in that range for a while, all right? So whatever quote unquote damage you do, if you get back on your plan, it's going to level back out. And you've already seen that. You're already down a pound and a half. I don't want you going down to 1200 calories. No. Um, I mean, maybe for a day, that's okay. Okay. But you don't want to spend the whole next week restricting, restricting, restricting. That's not what this period is for. All right. So understand when we reverse diet and we increase your calories, your scale weight's going to go up a little bit. All right, let's look at like what you've lost. You're down about 19 pounds, 
uh, 18, okay? If we can, during this reverse diet maintenance phase, and this can last, as he said in that video, can last a few weeks, can last six weeks, can last two months if you want it to. If we can maintain 80 to 90 percent of what you've lost, all right, in this case that would be uh, anywhere from two to four pounds. During that time period, that is successful. You do not have to stay at 169.8. If you were somewhere between 170 and 173 during this diet break, you are fine. You just don't want to get too far away from your prior best. It's really that easy. Maintenance, most people have a wacky expectation of that. They think, okay, I have to maintain my lowest point ever at the end of a fat loss phase on very low calories. And if I don't maintain that, I'm screwing it up and I, I'm, I'm losing it all and I'm a failure and screw it. I'm going to just eat. That's not it. We want to stay, again, about 80 to 90 percent of your best. For you, you lost 18 pounds. That's about two to four pounds. Okay? If we can do that, and you will do that, even if you go to New Orleans and, you know, don't track and go over your calories, after a week, week and a half, two weeks of being back on track, even at higher calories, it's going to even out and you're going to stay somewhere in that 173 to 170 range. Okay, that's all it is. Again, fitness lifestyle is nice because if you're doing the right stuff, 70, 80% of the time throughout the year, the other 20 to 30% doesn't matter. You don't have to stress about going on vacation. You don't have to stress about the holidays. Yes, your scale weight will bump up, here, you know, Temporarily, after you get done with whatever you're doing, that's expected, okay? But if you get back on track, it levels back out. That's all it is. You can't freak out. As he said in that video, people go into maintenance, first two or three weeks, their scale weight goes up two, three pounds, and they flip out. No. And then what do they do? They restrict. And he, he called it that restrict effort cycle, and that's what happens. They restrict. They feel restricted, they binge. That's not the idea here. All right, so it's a simple matter of being, even though we're on higher calories and in, in a reverse diet, quote unquote, maintenance phase, it's still a plan. There's still a calorie allotment. There's still a calorie allotment you don't go over. It's just a little bit more food, all right? And it's a little bit of break from a harsh deficit, but it's still a plan. And if you're doing that 70, 80, 85% of the time, when you go out of town or you want to go out to dinner one night, it doesn't matter as long as you get back on track after it. That's the problem. People, people go off track for one day or one week and they stress and they think, I screwed all this up. It's over. And they illogically binge eat, thinking that, that that's going to make the situation somehow better when it's not. It's just a matter of getting back on track and letting your body level out. That's it. That's all it is. <clears throat> but you have to be able to take the hits and be okay with seeing a couple pounds more on the scale for you know, a week or a week and a half or two weeks. It's not a big deal. All right. You can't let that flip out, flip you out because you are going, even if you did this maintenance thing perfectly and you didn't go to New Orleans last weekend or this coming week, even if you did it perfectly the way I'm, I'm going to outline it for you and, and guide you through it, you're still going to see a little uptick in the scale of a couple pounds just due to the fact that you're, there's going to be more food in your gut. You're going to be eating more carbohydrates. You're going to store more carbohydrates. You're going to store more water. Even if you did it perfectly and didn't have these trips, you would still see that. But you can't, you can't flip out and be like, I got to go back into fat loss. I, I have these conversations with people, with people all the time, Brenda. I, I put somebody else, I had so, uh, another female, young female, did unbelievable work got to her lightest, leanest ever, and two weeks into maintenance, she's like, I, I need to go back into fat loss. I'm like, no, you don't. You don't. It's detrimental. You can only diet for so long before you need a break. This is meant to be for life. It's not meant to be for a finite period of time. You're fine. It's a very good idea to take diet breaks. Again, it's about keeping the scales tipped in favor of doing the plan, 
more often than you don't do the plan, whether that's in maintenance or fat loss or whatever it is. So I hope that clarifies things. Just, just follow my instructions. Do not stress out about going to New Orleans. I don't want you having a food scale or, you know, certainly be mindful and look, if they have calorie counts at the restaurants, you know, maybe make a mental note. Okay. You know, I'm, I might be, you know, 300 calories over, 400 calories over. That's fine. If you do that all week long, you might end up gaining a pound, pound and a half. It's not a big deal. It's going to come right back down. So you see how all this works? Like it, it's not this all or nothing mentality. It's about consistency over perfection. All right, but we don't want you coming back from New Orleans. Let, let's say you get back next week and you're uh, 174 pounds. Who cares? That doesn't mean we, we eat uh, 1,000 for the next week and um, walk 30,000 steps a day to make up for it. That's disordered. You just get back on your normal plan. You go to the gym as scheduled. You, know, you, do, you do your normal activity and you get back on your quantified nutrition plan. And it will level back out. As I said, again, if we can stick around in that 170 to 173 range throughout this process, when we go back into fat loss, you're going to thrive and you're going to have a big bout of momentum there to where maybe you're, uh, we end up at 166 in May or something. You know what I mean? So that's what this looks like. I hope that, uh, that helps you out and eases your mind a little bit. Um, go on vacation, enjoy yourself. Don't go out of your way to get it all in, but enjoy your family, make some memories, have some good food, be active whenever you can. Not a big deal. All right. Hope that helps. Thanks.